25th of February, 2024. This is the date you all need to pencil in your diaries for the release of Elden Ring's Shadow of the Erd Tree DLC. Or at least that's what Data Blitz would have us think. Data Blitz is an online gaming and multimedia store who recently started advertising a pre-order for a limited edition Elden Ring Thrustmaster eSwap 2 Pro Controller on both their Twitter and main e-commerce website. And while it might not seem out of the ordinary for companies to make specific game branded controllers, in this instance, the interesting information lies on the pre-order page itself on Data Blitz's online store. When you followed the link from their tweet, it would take you to their pre-order page, and on here were several images containing additional information on the controller and the release date for not only the controller, but for Elden Ring Shadow of the Erd Tree DLC. The very first image very much so looks like a title page for a presentation, saying Thrustmaster eSwap 2 Pro Controller Elden Ring Limited Edition and is dated October 2023, so this is something that has been created within the last few months. Then onto the next image or slide which shows the Shadow of the Erd Tree image originally shared by From Software when the DLC was originally announced, and is titled eSwap 2 Elden Ring Generic Limited Edition, and showcases what this new controller will look like. It also has a subtitle saying, Design agreed for sample submission by Bandai Namco open to changes to cope with Elden Ring branding policy slash style guide. This writing is not something you would ever put on a product page that was intended for a public audience, and is clearly only meant as a placeholder. The controller itself does actually look very sleek, with a cool black and gold design with a golden d-pad and back triggers. The next image on the page has Elden Ring standard imagery and says Bandai Namco Thrustmaster Elden Ring Collab, availability February 2024. Sync with new Shadow of the Erd Tree expansion release, Elden Ring Anniversary. And as you may or may not know, Elden Ring was released on the 25th of February 2022, so this leads us to an anniversary date of 25th of February 2024. The next image presented then goes on to detail the specifications for the actual controller itself, stating they will have next gen S5 NXG mini stick modules, modularity and hot swap technology, long lasting and super responsive mechanical buttons, four additional rear buttons, and physical locking catches. And most of this is pretty much par for the course with these type of controllers. Then finally, and most interestingly, the last image or slide is titled Roadmap, Future Potential Character Limited Edition, and is subtitled To Animate Sale in Year 2 of Collaboration 2025, which then showcases two additional controllers, a red star labeled Melania character, and a blue star labeled Rani character. And as with the original controller, underneath this it states, Design suggestions presented to Bandai Namco, open to changes to cope with Elden Ring branding policy style guide. At the very bottom of the page, it finishes with, Release to be synchronised with 2025 Elden Ring Major Keybeat, or New Game Expansion. For those of you who don't know what a keybeat is, well, it isn't anything. It's not a term used in the English language, so this is most likely just a mistranslation. But in my opinion, in the context of the page, it reads as though it means a marketing push of some form. So this could mean anything from another DLC, a Game of the Year edition, or if we really wanted to overspeculate, a sequel. But I think it's more likely another DLC expansion. Either way, whatever it means, Thrustmaster are planning for both a limited edition 2024 controller to release on the Elden Ring anniversary in 2024, and two limited edition controllers to coincide with a major keybeat or new game expansion happening in 2025. So, first things first, is this real or is it just a fake? Well, I would personally say that this is very much a real collaboration between Thrustmaster and Bandai Namco, and it wouldn't be the first collaboration between these two companies, as they previously have teamed up in 2018 to make a joystick for Ace Combat 7 Skies Unknown, so there is definitely a working relationship between the two. But clearly, the tweet and landing page for pre-orders was never meant to be seen by the public in its current format. There are far too many placeholder phrases, spelling mistakes, and marketing no-nos for this ever to have been greenlit to go live by either Bandai Namco or Thrustmaster. The phrase, open to changes to cope with Elden Ring branding policy style guide, Melania character, Rani character, and having both the generic and character placeholders on the image titles just scream out that this is most likely a proof of concept or more likely, a presentation page that was or would be used to showcase to Bandai Namco what their product would be like. Now, this isn't to say that this is just a proof of concept. There is a very good chance that the product does exist, 
whether that's exactly as per the images shown, or in a since refined state, while only Thrustmaster and Bandai Namco know for certain. What we can safely say though, is that this pre-order page was never supposed to be revealed to the general public, especially as all of their socials and the webpage for the controller were swiftly taken down. A cached version of the main landing page can still be accessed from the Google Cache Archive if you want to take a look, or you can check out the Reddit page where this was first discovered. The key takeaway for me is the February 2024 date. And yes, while this could quite easily just be a placeholder date that they put in for the presentation, if Thrustmaster were doing a collaboration with Bandai Namco, then it would make complete sense for them to know exactly when they were intending on releasing the DLC, especially as the product they are working on ties in with said release date. Also, February 2024 has popped up before as a likely date for the Shadow of the Earth Tree DLC drop. Back in November, I released a video about the Kadokawa Quarterly Report. Kadokawa are the parent company of From Software, and on one of the slides in their quarterly investor report, it clearly showed a huge surge in expected sales around February and March 2024. Now, at the time of making that video, I was certain that this meant the DLC would drop and be playable in February, March at the very latest. And as you all know, I almost bet my left kidney on the fact that we would be getting the trailer at this year's Game Awards. But after staying up stupidly late in the UK to watch it, and preparing a video in advance and draining all my copium, as you know, From Software were nowhere to be seen. One thing I hadn't considered was that the surge in sales could be purely down to just the pre-order revenue. In theory, and I hope this isn't the case, From Software could only announce the DLC in February, with it then due to drop at a later date. And this spike is forecasted from just the initial pre-orders. I genuinely don't believe this is the case, especially now that we have what is most definitely our most credible source for an unofficial, official release date with this controller leak. One takeaway from the Game Awards is from God of War, who showed us that why bother with a long-winded marketing campaign for a new DLC? Why not just give 5 days notice and let the hype train roll? And this could be exactly the same tactic that From Software are planning on using for their Shadow of the Earth Tree DLC. What other reason could they have for not utilising the Game Awards, a platform they have previously utilised for announcing their upcoming products? And in From Software's history, they haven't always been consistent with the amount of notice they have given us between announcing a DLC to it being released. For some back history, the Dark Souls 1 Artorius of the Abyss DLC was announced in April 2012, and then released 7 months later in November. Dark Souls 2 announced all 3 DLCs in June 2014, with a DLC being released each month following this announcement. Bloodborne's The Old Hunter DLC was announced in September 2015, and then released 2 months later in November 2015. And finally, Dark Souls 3 announced the first DLC Ashes of Ariandel in August 2016, and it didn't release for a further 3 months. Their second DLC, The Ring City, was then announced another 2 months later in January 2017, and went live at the end of March 2017. So while they usually stick to within a 1-3 to three month window from announcement to release, it really is anyone's guess. And for me, Shadow dropping one of the most anticipated DLCs of recent years seems like exactly the kind of curveball that Hidetaka Miyazaki would throw at us, after making us wait almost two years since Elden Ring originally released. Granted, we did get the free Colosseum DLC back in December last year, but this felt more like a multiplayer update than an actual expansion. So in a nutshell, the odds have never been more in our favour than with this latest leak, or more so, accidental screw up by a Datablitz employee. As of now, it is a safe bet that we will be getting the Elden Ring Shadow of the Earth Tree DLC on or around the two year anniversary of Elden Ring's initial release date, which makes it 25th of February 2024. And not only that, we may even be getting an additional DLC the following year. While this idea could even harken back to when From Software were planning on making two DLCs that they then merged into one larger DLC that we are now all eagerly awaiting for, based on the fact the first image is actually date stamped as October 2023, this leans more towards two DLCs still being in the works. Who knows? Well, this man that's for certain. As for when the rest of us mere maidenless tarnished will find out, we will just have to wait and see. And for now, that's it. As always, thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe for more Elden Ring content.